All right, welcome back to the second session. So we have Johan talking about kinematics of manga disk galaxies with different bulge types. Okay, thank you for the introduction. I'm Johan Wong, a PhD student from Tsinghua University, and I'm glad to be here to do our recent work. Okay, so the galaxy right here is M81. You can see its beautiful disk structure and the typical bright spiral in the center. So it's a typical disk galaxy with a classical bulge. But the galactic bulge is not always spherical. It is actually by model in multiple properties and can be roughly classified to classical bulge and pseudo bulge. So as I lift here, classical bulge and pseudo bulges are different in structures, cell population, and kinematics. And based on the difference here, people traditionally, uh, people traditionally assume that they are formed by different mechanisms and involve the parallel paths. So people assume that classical bulges to obtain is spheroidal structure, they are formed by major mergers. And the pseudobulges, just on the opposite, they are formed by cycle evolution with a merger-free history to keep its disk structure. But bulge classification and evolution is not that simple. If you choose one of the criteria here, that's by one galaxy you just observe, you will find that the failure rate of your classification will be up to 25%. It is quite high because of a large fraction of galaxies are quite ambiguous and hard to be classified. So the dilemma in bulge classification here blurs the boundary of the two bulge types and challenges people's understanding of their bulge formation. Okay, so let's put galaxies in this parameter space. The x-axis is the surface density with the one kvc relative to stellar mass, and the y-axis is the central before thousand brick. So it is um, central stellar population versus central density. So if the formation is narrow that classical bodies are formed by merger and slow bodies are formed by circular evolution is correct, we would expect a beautiful diameter distribution in this figure. But the observation tells us the distribution is not diagonal, but actually a shape of elbow. You would find that a large fraction of galaxies here they are quite strange because they are structurally more similar to classical bulge because they have higher density, but they are also star forming, so they are actually similar to pseudobulge. So in this figure, we define galaxies on the left to be pseudobulges, and galaxies on the right to be classical bodies. So you see the classical bodies is composite in their stellar population. They color a wide range of star formation, and the pseudobodies is more homogeneous in their stellar population. So the elbow shape here is stellar population versus structure, and reveals the inconsistency between galaxy structure, between bulge structure and bulge stellar population. So we naturally ask, what about kinematics? Kinematics is tightly related to galaxy mass distribution and is related to multiple physical processes, including gas accretion, murders, and feedback, etc. So we have several questions for kinematics. Does kinematics relate tighter to bulge structure or bulge cell population? Is classical bodies also composite and complex in kinematics? And is pseudo bodies also homogeneous in kinematics? The data point here is from Sloan spectra, from which we only have fiber structure and we don't have any uh, spatial resolved velocity and dispersion information. Uh, fortunately, we have data from Manga, so from the IFU data, we have velocity maps and dispersion maps. So we learned, uh, so we were able to learn about how kinematics would be related to the bulge properties. So here we select about 500 galaxies from Manga, from which we have V maps and dispersion maps. So we were able to learn about how kinematics is distributed in this parameter space. And this is our sample distributed in this parameter space. We also see this elbow shape here. So the galaxies on the lower left are pseudobulge galaxies. On the uh, higher right is chiasm classical bodies. And galaxies here are star forming classical bodies. And we call them elbow here. So here I show a distribution of the three types of bodies in the parameter spaces. And you have a general understanding of how the three different types are different, um, of how different they are. So from left to right are central surface density with the one kvc versus stellar mass, specific star formation versus stellar mass, and half mass reader versus stellar mass. You will see that the red points, the quiet in classical bodies, they um, always tend to have higher density, lower star formation rates, and smaller size. The star forming classical bodies, the green points here, they always tend to have higher density, they always star forming, and also smaller size. And the pseudobodies, there are blue points here, so they always tend to have lower surface density, higher star formation rate, and also larger size. So this is basically a um, general understanding of how different these three types are. So for kinematics, we calculate this parameter named lambda. You can see this normalized um, indicator of galaxy rotation support. 
So lambda equals zero means they are totally random motion dominated, and zero equals one, and, and lambda equals one means they are totally rotation dominated. So we color our galaxies in this plot by lambda, and we smooth it by an algorithm. And you will see a very beautiful distribution of G-shaped pattern. So the first thing I want to point out is you will see galaxy on slab, the galaxies, they are mainly, you can see many blue points here, and the galaxy on the right, there are mainly red points. So it is nice, it is consistent with our traditional understanding that the body is always dynamically cool and text of body is always dynamically hot. But you also see something interesting. The most striking feature here is the distribution on the left. You will see that for pseudobulge galaxies, you will see monotonic behavior between galaxy rotation support and the central deposit. And I, I need to emphasize here that lambda is measured within one effect radius. So it is actually a global rotation support indicator is not just, it is not just about measurement. So why would we see a relation between central stellar population and global rotation support? And you also see that galaxies on the bottom, they are pseudobulges, they are star forming, but they would even have low lambda values that are similar to the classical bulges right here. So what makes the monotonic behavior here, and why are those pseudobulge galaxies have low rotation support? So a very simple explanation should be galaxies may just increase their lambda and increase their default thousands as they increase mass. So would that just be mass dependence? So we plot galaxies, we plot pseudobulge galaxies in the parameter space left is lambda versus central default thousand, and the right hand is lambda versus stellar mass. So you could tell from a distribution and the Spearman correlation coefficient here that lambda correlates tighter, sorry, lambda correlates tighter with default thousand rather than stellar mass. So just mass dependence cannot expand it, and we need another scenario that can link, uh, uh, that, that can link central stellar star population and the rotation support better. So what we do here is we flag galaxies with disturbed morphology. And you will see that um, clearly from the last figure that gal uh, that's the disturbed morphology mainly resides in the low lambda regions and hardly reach the sequence here. So galaxies with lower D4000 center would have lower rotation support and this term morphology, vice, uh, vice versa. And I have a gallery here from which you can clearly see the morphology from bottom to top, um, D4000 is increasing. So, uh, and the galaxies on the left are this term morphology and on the right are on this term. So you can clearly see that for the galaxy on the bottom, we have uh, quite a symmetric or clump morphology. And as D4000 increases, the morphology tends to be settled. So the morphology here are indicating that those galaxies may have experienced disturbance. I don't know whether um, it's internal or external, maybe both could work. A small morphology is indicating that may have been like uh, mergers or instabilities, things like that. Okay, so from the results we just show, we see, uh, we see that the galaxies on the bottom and on the top, they are different in morphology, with kinematics, and central star formation. So this result consistent with several different um, evolution scenarios, and I can um, quickly explain some of them. So firstly, you can quickly uh, imagine that for a galaxy with regular disk morphology and high rotation support, you can imagine that for uh, you can imagine that for a galaxy like this, the gas is um, regularly circling in the, in the galaxy, and it is hard for the gas to get into the center to feed the central star formation. But for a galaxy, galaxy with their term morphology, maybe, have, maybe have, they have experienced mergers on stability. That makes the gas easier to get into the center to face central star formation. So what we see here could just be a result that is uh, naturally produced by gas accretion, regulated by end momentum. And another effect here is um, stellar feedback and kinematics. So it is possible that uh, the galaxy on the right, they may just experience the mergers or instabilities. That um, that's provides more gas and enhance higher star formation. And higher star formation just makes stronger feedback on kinematics and result in the lower rotation support we see here. Okay, and uh, here's another possible scenario is the star formation efficiency is also regulated by kinematics. So it is possible that um, for the galaxy with regular disk morphology, we have higher rotation support, and those higher rotation supports may just provide higher share and prevent the gas to collapse to form stars. But for galaxies with this morphology, 
maybe the Cretan support just provides enough dispersion and makes star formation more, more, more efficient. So here I show some several uh, scenarios to um, explain those results. And we don't, know, uh, we, we don't know which is correct, but I think we have seen some uh, effects of those, uh, of those disturbances in, uh, sim uh, in simulations. And here is the result from observation. And it would be interesting to learn how they compare. OK, so let's come back to this figure again. We have seen some very interesting uh, G-shape in, 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 the, in the parameter space. And we have asked several questions at the beginning of this talk. And it's time to come back to answer them. First, does kinematics relate tighter to bulge kinematics or bulge stellar population? We will see that, well, we see some general trends that um, rotation small decreases as the delta sigma 1 increases, and it decreases as the central Asian um, increases. But um, it is also interesting to point out that there are actually a beautiful J shape present here. And its classical bodies also compensate the kinematics. We say yes, but we also see um, the color distribution here is um, it, it, it's only weak related to the y axis. And what is most important thing and interesting thing is um, is the bodies homogeneous kinematics? We will say no. Although we see them, um, although we see the bodies seem to be homogeneous in star population, they are not homogeneous kinematics. And Rotation support increases as the central age increases. It is very interesting part. Okay, so um, we not, uh, uh, we not only uh, see the difference. Uh, so, so from the figure here, we see some difference between slow bodies and classical bodies. The behavior is different, but I also um, call attention here that there are impressively parts of a global smooth bearing landscape, which we call it a G shape. So what does kinematics tell us about bulge evolution? Okay, so um, let me uh, remind you that the elbow shape here shows inconsistency between stellar population and surface density. And this diagram here actually suggests that bulges may evolve like this. Oh, I'm sorry. So it is suggesting that bulges are not evolving parallelly, um, but they would first evolve horizontally, so bulges would horizontally to the star forming classical bulge and then vertically uh, and, and the vertically quench involved to the cryos and classical, bulge, classical bulges. So is so is our kinematic result supporting this scenario? Well first uh, from the very first side it seems to be quite um, consistent because uh, the color pattern here is very similar to the um, assumed evolutionary track here. But I would um, remind you of this figure. So this is figure is the half mass radius versus stellar mass. The blue point is slow bodies, the green point is star forming classical bodies, and the red points are classical bodies, quasi classical bodies. So you will see that um, the slow bodies is always um, have larger size than classical bodies at a fixed mass. So the horizontal um, evolution track in the left figure is actually would be like this in the right hand figure. So um, if we assume the evolution track is correct, then the physical process must be able not only to keep its kinematic structure, but also shrink the galaxy size. So could that be possible? And is there any physical mechanism that can uh, result in this? Uh, we're not sure, and we cannot answer this question right now. But um, I think those figures, uh, those kinematic and size results could be interesting for um, and could be helpful in future modeling. And would also be interesting to compare those results um, in simulations. Hey, and uh, here comes my take home message. So I have shown you how the rotation support is distributed in the bulge parameter space. And we also see, uh, we see a beautiful G-ship here. And also see that also about this, it is interesting that the rotation support increases as the central age increases. And we also discuss possible um, scenario and the evolution of here. And that is all for my talk. And thanks you for the attention. Questions? Uh, so, uh, as I understand it, your definition of pseudo bulges is, is largely dependent on delta sigma 1, yeah. the, the uh, mm -hmm. uh, surface density uh, as a function of uh, uh, total stellar mass. Yeah. Uh, but that's different from uh, Cormandy's old definition which was more dependent on the Cersic index, low Cersic index, uh, classical uh, uh, pseudo bulges, high Cersic index, more like four uh, classical bulges. Uh, have you 
can you compare the two? Uh, for example, on uh, this figure, do you have a color-coded version of uh, the CIRSIC index? Uh, I don't have that comparison for, for, for my sample here, but um, the comparison is uh, done in, in, in this paper. So they have compared the LSD1 with a uh, command relation by uh, with a uh, Gadotti sample. Mm -hmm. It's uh, the paper in 2007, uh, 2009, and they compare this and see the LSD1 is quite consistent with their command relation. Yeah. I'm sorry, I didn't quite get So the elbow galaxies, are those more low CERSIC or high CERSIC? Aha, uh -huh, okay. So uh, that's, I think, consistent with your interpretation then. Yeah. The, the more organized the rotation, the more like a spiral galaxy. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the more that they have a central star formation. Mm -hmm. uh, sorry, less central star formation. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, while Joanna comes set it up, uh, if you have any last questions, quick question. No more questions? All right. Let's thank the speaker again.